Communicate. Listening and speaking skills. Course book. CD two. Unit thirteen. Vocabulary. Exercise three. Taking a gap year is now an increasingly popular activity for many young people in Britain, according to a recent report. Every year, around a quarter of school leavers who are going on to university decide to defer the start of their course and take a year out before starting their degree course. Some do it to get work or life experience; others just want to take a break from their studies. Some teenagers spend the year volunteering in schools, hospitals, or NGOs in the UK or abroad. Others prefer to spend part of the year working to save up money and then spend several months travelling. South America, Asia, and Australia are popular destinations. Gap years aren't only for school leavers. Some people take a career break later in life. But they are certainly most popular with 16 to 25-year-olds. Annually, around 250,000 British people in this age group take a gap year. It's very popular in countries like Britain and Australia, and becoming more typical in the U.S. But in other countries like Japan, there's more pressure on young people to go straight from education into employment. Unit thirteen, speaking, exercise three. One. Hello, my name's Jack. I decided to take a year out and come to Australia before I start studying to be a vet next autumn. I'm spending six months working on a sheep station. It's great work experience and has changed my views about our relationships with animals a lot. Two. Hi, Chantal here. I wanted to make my gap year count. I've taken a break from my studies, but I don't want to waste my time. I'm going to do business studies next year, so I was really pleased to get a job in an advertising agency. It's really changed my attitude to work. Three. Hi, this is Michelle. I wanted to make a difference, so I'm spending three months in Namibia working as a teacher's assistant in a primary school. It's an amazing experience and a real eye opener. I'm pleased to be spending part of my gap year volunteering. It makes me feel I'm making a contribution in some way. When I finish here, I'm going on a trip round Southern Africa. Four. Hi, my name's Sarah. Last summer, I went interrailing round Europe and had a brilliant time, so I decided to spend my gap year travelling. I had a Saturday job all the way through sixth form, and I worked in a factory for three months to save up for the trip. I spent a month in Indonesia, and now I'm in Thailand. I'm having an amazing time. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, really, and has totally changed my perspective on life. Unit thirteen, pronunciation, exercise A. I decided to take a year out and come to Australia before I start studying to be a vet next autumn. Unit thirteen, pronunciation, exercise C. I'm going to do business studies next year, so I was really pleased to get a job in an advertising agency. Unit thirteen, listening, exercise two. So Raquel, you spent last year in Ireland on an Erasmus program. Can you tell us something about that? Well, it was a fantastic experience, one that I'd really recommend to other students. Why is that exactly? Well, I think it's brilliant to have the chance to live in a different country. You realise that a lot of the things you thought were incredibly complicated are quite fun. You learn so many things. First of all, English, I imagine. Well, the great thing about studying in Galway was that, even though the language of the university was English, 
I also learned one or two words and phrases in Gaelic. That's the original language of the people of Ireland, you know?、Mm-hmm. Of course, in everyday situations, in shops and stuff, most people spoke English. But you can sometimes hear Gaelic spoken in the bars. The one word that everybody learns there is slancha, which means cheers in Irish. <laughs> Tell me about the people you met. Well, I was living in a student residence. There were eight of us sharing a kitchen and living room. Three Irish students, and the rest were from France, Holland, two from Romania, and, well, me and one other student from Spain. That must have been interesting. It was. I think that was one of the best things about the whole experience meeting people from other places and opening up my perspective on life. Also, in Madrid, it's just me and my family. So, just the whole experience of living with other people was a real eye opener. It really taught me a lot. And I imagine it was interesting attending a foreign university. Yes, that was very interesting. The style of the classes was quite different. In GMIT, the teaching was more practical, more hands on, whereas in Madrid, we spent more time listening and taking notes. I suppose the level is higher in our universities at home. I mean, what you have to do in Ireland is a bit easier, but doing it in another language makes it difficult. What were the main differences you noticed between life in Galway and in Madrid? Wow, there's so many, it's difficult to know where to start. One thing was that the day was so much shorter in winter, it was dark by 4 pm. And then Ireland is loads more expensive than Spain. They say it's even more expensive than London. Can you give us any examples? Well, when I was there, a small bottle of Coke cost two euros twenty, and a beer cost about five euros. Right. So, do you have any regrets? None at all. <laughs> I don't know. It was just a real turning point for me. I think if I'd stayed here, I wouldn't have learned half the things I did. Unit 13 Functional Language Exercise 1 Can you tell us something about that? Why is that exactly? First of all, English, I imagine. Tell me about the people you met. That must have been interesting. And I imagine it was interesting attending a foreign university. What were the main differences you noticed between life in Galway and in Madrid? Can you give us any examples? Do you have any regrets? Unit 13 Functional Language Exercise 4. Can you tell me something about your trip to Marrakesh? Well, it was amazing. Everything was so different. Can you give us any examples? Well, the people, the way of life, even the shopping. Oh, yes. Tell me about the markets. Well, the markets are incredible. They're huge. It's really easy to get lost. You can buy all kinds of clothes, bags. Wow, and it must be cheaper than here. Yes, but you have to haggle, you know, argue about the price. I don't think I'd be good at that. Was there anything you didn't like? Well, it is quite stressful. It's all very fast moving and in your face. So it's not the most relaxing type of holiday, but it was a brilliant experience. Unit 13. Pronunciation. Exercise A. That must have been interesting. That must have been interesting. Unit 13. Final task. Exercise 1. Interview 1. So I see you took a year out. 
Can you tell me something about it and what you got out of it? I went interrailing round Eastern Europe. It was amazing. I met loads of people. We were partying all the time, and it was dead cheap. In Estonia, you could get beer for the equivalent of seventy-five cents. Interview two. So I see you took a year out. Can you tell me something about it and what you got out of it? I went interrailing round Eastern Europe. It was really interesting. I met lots of people from different countries, which meant I got to practice my languages, and it also opened up my perspectives. You know, I got to see life from another point of view. It was also the first time I'd been away from home and had to look after myself, so it taught me a lot about being organised and managing my money. Unit thirteen, review, exercise four. One. I had a Saturday job all the way through sixth form, and I worked in a factory for three months to save up for the trip. Two. Going to study at a university in another city and finding somewhere to stay there is a real challenge. Three. I think it's brilliant to have the chance to live in a different country. Four. It's incredible. You go into a market and you realise it's huge. It's really easy to get lost.